Carrie, you were born and raised here in St. John's. Uh, when did you begin to take an interest in art, do you remember? Uh, well, I'd have to go all the way back to uh, childhood squirrels, I guess, and uh, doing faces that looked like bees, and then one day the bee became a more recognizable face, and I didn't know I was being interested in art, though. I just thought I was doing something exciting. It was a revelation to you, wasn't it, at the time? Well, it's a, it's a memorable moment. Uh, not often you remember your first uh, uh, progress from, you know, B to, <laughs> to nose, mouth. So. Uh -huh. uh, were you encouraged by, by your family? Was there art in the family and so on? Uh, it was too soon for people to talk in terms of art. Uh, it was just a question of trying to get the family grown up, educated and uh, do the various things the families do. And, uh, so, no, I, I would say at that time, uh, there was a more, more of an interest in literature, I think, because after all, books are easier to deal with, and I, I think we all did well in English, you know, you know things like that in, in school. And uh, certainly, uh, my eldest brother, Albert, was always orating Shakespeare all over the place. And, and, uh, and also, yes, he had, a, he had a talent for drawing, and uh, he, had, he originated the Felian magazine at Bishop Field, and um, had drawings of hockey players and so on. Do you remember a time when you decided that you wanted to become an artist? Uh, probably when I was leaving school, I think, and uh, the interest was so intense that uh, although I had sidetracked myself and gone to take up nursing because I wanted to sort of get this feeling of independence and uh, being on my own. And uh, I didn't think so much I'm going to be an artist. I just wanted to study art. That's how I thought about it then. Did you go away then at this time to, to an art college? Well, I didn't go away to study art, no. I, I went away because I just knew I couldn't stay home. Uh, the, uh, I was not interested in the social atmosphere as such. And uh, I guess, yes, art uh, certainly had a lot to do with it, that uh, whatever I wanted was out there in the world somewhere. And uh, because a sister and some friends of hers had gone ahead and sort of had their apartment there and <coughs> were <coughs> enjoying living in New York. Uh, that was the first place I thought of. I mean, we were not Canada then and uh, actually didn't really um, head in that, didn't have my mind in that direction at all because, uh, you know, even the day or and a half we stayed in Halifax seemed to us was a pretty dull sort of place. <laughs> so Some people think the idea of going on to New York sounded much more interesting. Uh, and what did you do in New York? What, what time was this, by the way? What, what year? Uh, you, the you early 30s, I would have to say. Mm -hmm. I, in all honesty, I have to say 30s. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you uh, did what in New York? You went to, you found an art college, did you? Or? Well, no, it didn't happen that way. You see, I, I was uh, still working off and on in the hospital. The, the hours had become eight hours, and, and we could take any hours. So I would take when I found where the art, first I tried the night shift for art, and uh, um, didn't like it too well. Uh, I, I wanted to get into daytime art, so I preferred then going to what they call the twilight shift, you know, the, the 4 to 11 or 4 to 12 shift at the hospital, which uh, was much more convenient because then I had all morning and part of, your, you know, part of the afternoon to, uh, to get over to the art schools. And uh, also, there was a lot of time off in between, so because uh, I was decided to do private duty rather than be stuck in the hospital. And uh, so uh, being the time of the Depression, there was a lot of time in between. And uh, that, you know, fitted quite well. Mm -hmm. Do you remember being influenced by any particular school of art or artists at that time? Uh, no, uh, just just really excited by having seen you know the first models, first live models, going to the museums, drawing from casts, 
uh, because it was too early. Uh, the, uh, the teacher who I think, uh, I guess, influenced uh, me most because I was with, them, with him, he broke away from this, uh, the WPA schools that where we started because all these schools were free and, and his students um, became very devoted to him and his teaching and they persuaded him. That's how his really first studio started. He, they persuaded him that he had enough pupils, enough followers. And uh, I was quite impressed that they approached me as one of the serious students who could be part of this group. So, so well, that was the influences then came from uh, his talking very much about what he called, never mind the, <coughs> you know, the try to draw apples and, and, and things like that. Your draw, what you're going for is the spirit of art, the spirit of the thing. And uh, that came, you know, I came in for a lot of teasing later at home with a couldn't quite make out what I was trying to do and say, well, never mind, you know, we, we understand it's just the spirit of the thing that matters. <laughs> Were you selling anything of yours at this time? No, it's the last thing in the world any of us thought of was selling anything because we didn't think uh, such things were possible. And even, uh, you know, good artists weren't selling anything at that time. And uh, so it wasn't only us who were just uh, students. How long did you stay in New York? Uh, well, it's hard to say, you see, because I would probably have a year or two at a time and then come home, sometimes um, for a period of six months, sometimes for a year. So when I finally broke away, now by that time I had also gone to uh, Hans Hoffman. I had stayed away from the Breacher Studio for quite a while. and had a feeling that I wanted uh, a new approach. Uh, I be begun, this was after the war now, I'm beginning to look in windows and see things that I really liked in the way of modern art. And uh, without letting Breacher know, because he was a very jealous teacher, I mean, he broke, really broke friendships with, with students because they had dared to go to some other painting. He was a great teacher for, you know, for his, uh, his dedication. And of course also the Impressionists were very much part of his, um, uh, the, the genre that he liked. But he, he You wanted to break away from that, did you? Well, I, I didn't, I don't know what I want. No, it wasn't so much, I guess, breaking away. Maybe I wanted to just step into a new, uh, to see what this modern art was about if I could pick up a new, uh, you know, broaden the, the uh, concepts a bit. Well, Hans Hoffman was uh, really, a, you know, quite, quite a traumatic thing in a way because uh, his students, when I went in, nobody told me exactly what it was going to be, so I'm <coughs> faced with a lot of uh, people working with a model but not drawing the model. They were drawing you know, squares and triangles mm -hmm. and standing back, you know, going this way and that way. And, uh, and then I was hearing terms that I hadn't heard before, such as, um, well, Hans Hoffman was famous for the, the phrase push and pull, which was, you know, the tensions between forward and back with the, pl the sense of plasticity, which uh, when I did grasp it, um, made quite a difference to, I mean, the, the, what I did after that was quite confused, but at least I was beginning to understand that there was a form within the composition uh, with what you did with the, with the picture space, as well as the form of a hand or, or a bottle or something like that, you see. And it was also a concept that uh, not only applied to uh, what the modernists were doing, but also uh, you could go back into history with it as the uh, not the early not the early Christian art, but later in the Renaissance when I gather, I suspect most of the Renaissance paintings, while they were religious because of commissions and things, and that was the thing to do. 
but they, you know, the reason so many of them were so different is because they were all trying their own ways of moving in and out of uh, the art process. Hmm. Did you feel that you had exhausted the scene in New York? Is that why you left? You know, you could never, <laughs> you could never exhaust the New York scene. I may have uh, come to a point in New York where, well, there were other influences uh, there too. Uh, I was offered, uh, my, bro my brother, who had been in the, uh, in the Merchant Navy, had uh, the idea that it was time we saw Europe, and uh, he also uh, was rather keen on uh, seeing what I would do uh, with a year on my own in, in Europe, to with, with uh, just art, and not any feeling that I had to or living or anything like that. I had a very strong feeling about independence. Uh, so this was, uh, this was really the beginning of uh, breaking away from New York. But I mean, New, New York, uh, New York has become run down. But there's always, uh, I'm sure there are other parts of the United States that are also equally uh, exciting to be in. But uh, to me, uh, I had thought really of New York uh, as really a second home, you see, because I, I knew it so well. But once I got over to Europe, I mean, the one year, you know, worked into another year and a year beyond that. And then, of course, I was exposed to all kinds of, uh, you know, to get your first day in Paris, all you see are great big signs all over the place, you know, this art ex exhibition on here. I mean, the whole place was just so full of art that uh, uh, it was quite exciting for another reason. <laughs> Kid in a candy shop. <laughs> well, a little bit, a little bit overwhelmed, uh, I guess, too, because there's, uh, there's always the human aspect, you know, who, who you're going to uh, chum up with and what's uh, even a little a little fear in a way as to now it's just art and as if I had to, you know, maybe again start all over again, you know, trying to prove myself. Mm. Were you doing a lot of work at this time while you were in Paris? You could run all over Paris. I, I didn't do, I didn't do a lot of uh, outside painting in Paris. I don't know why I did, because everything was there. Now, uh, if you had been down at the exhibition, <clears throat> the, the first poly, you know, the the uh, complete exhibition. There was quite a, there were quite a few things there from the Paris days that uh, I just dug out of the box, and Dick Green just pounced on these things. You see, one was rooftops. Uh, the first hotel, little hotel, the Hotel Bonaparte. I mean, it was just lovely to go out on the balcony and open the window for summertime and uh, look down on the street and. Uh, or even look across the way, which part of uh, one of the first bedroom scenes I did of my own room, and then I could see right across the street into, because they had their uh, shutters open as well, and there were, I know there were some young chaps there studying, you know, I could hear the music, and they were also having a lot of fun and things like that. Mm -hmm. But there was uh, all kinds of material in Paris, but for some reason I didn't, I did, more sketching, I guess, than larger paintings. I have quite a number of sketches in, in my sketchbooks of sitting in the Luxembourg or other people sitting in the Luxembourg, you know, working. It's easier, you see, to go around with uh, a few sketchbooks and uh, a small box of watercolors or something because you don't become so obvious to people. And uh, you can work away, they don't even know you're there because you're under the trees. And did you, did you come back to Newfoundland then after your time in Paris? I came back after, you know, the uh, 1956, 55, 56. Mm -hmm. And uh, 56, when of course, uh, you see, before I had been away from Newfoundland for eight years because when I went back to New York uh, after my last time, you know, coming home for a year or a half a year or something, it was uh, 1947, I think, and then uh, by the time I went to Paris, uh, Newfoundland was, had just gone into Confederation. 
And so when I came back, it was a whole new world, new, new language was going on around me, and uh, every, you know, I could see the differences. But uh, that was the first year I heard of, of course, that I heard of the arts and leisures, and I entered with some trepidation because I had no idea what the standard of work or even a way of judging what my own standard was like, and I uh, won the second prize. And the adjudicator that year was Robert Pilot, which was quite prestigious also. What uh, kind of competition were you up against? Who else was uh, painting and drawing and so on um, at that time? Not too much professional work. Uh, there, there was certainly a lot of talent around. Uh, Gary Saunders, who was in the forestry, he was uh, showing a lot of talent. He, in fact, got the first prize that, uh, that year. I got the second. A few others. But uh, no, it's true, it wasn't a great competition. Was there much interest in art? Were there any galleries and that sort of thing? Um, no, I don't think so. The, uh, the main thing, I think, was either the Arts and Letters Exhibition or... Uh, and I don't think the Art Association was reformed. There was something... Uh, people put on exhibitions. We used the... Uh, what we call the... Uh, the, the, the United States... Uh, they had, you see, that was another thing when the uh, the Americans were here. They were they were quite interested in art, and they had started had some exhibitions. As that uh, little USO building, I guess, there on Parade, still there on Parade Street, and we had some exhibitions there, as well as down at the George V. But it wasn't until uh, uh, the arts and culture. The first buildings were built, and the library was one of the first buildings, and they had a bona fide art gallery there then. When did, when did you begin to, uh, to sell uh, works of yours? Well, <laughs> it's an interesting question because uh, it brings into question uh, a lot of other questions, such as uh, the people were not buying the same way. It's really quite strange when you think of it. We had things exhibited in those uh, exhibitions at charging as low as $30, and $50 was even a high price, and still uh, hardly anybody was buying. Very, you know, few people here and there. They would remark and, uh, you know, like your work, but uh, nobody was putting out $30, $40, $50 for uh, That began a bit later in the 60s, I think. Uh, I'm not saying nobody, I'm not cancelling the whole thing out, but, but certainly we came back with a lot of the work that we, that we exhibited. It's a hard way to make really, a living. Yes, it was certainly hard work. We were, fortunately, many of us weren't, <laughs> weren't even trying. But uh, I should say that in between there somewhere, uh, because when I came back in 56, uh, the shepherds had opened their school, so to be fair to them, people were beginning, you know, to work under good tuition at that time. And they also had exhibitions of other uh, students' work. What uh, was, did coming back to Newfoundland uh, have, uh, must have had an influence on, obviously, on your imagery and your subject matter and so on. Did it, did it, it uh, how much did it influence you as, as an artist? Uh, Coming back, not just the not just the social atmosphere. Yes, but no. You mean every everything. Yes. Well, uh, I think I was kind of glad to be back in a way. Uh, you do, you know, it's a lot of glamour to talk about moving around. I didn't just stay in Paris, of course. You know, I moved uh, on down. Uh, one of the things I learned away, and I have. A sort of essay started on that, which maybe one day I'll try and pull together, I don't know, that uh, I used to think at one time, especially before I went to Europe, that it was enough to say, well, gosh, you know, so-and-so is in Paris, London, uh, Rome, or whatever. But uh, when I got there, I found that these were quite often just uh, jumping off places, and, and it was uh, 
very unnerving sometimes to find somebody had just been off to Spain or somebody else had been with me or somebody, and you thought, well, what am I doing here? I'm, you know, I was really beginning to feel I was just as much in a rut in Paris as I was in, uh, in New York or, or anywhere else. And so the urge to go was very strong. And Continue. See, uh, the other place as well, you know, you had the opportunity to do so. So I spent, I guess, Italy uh, and uh, southern France was, that was one of the longest times I was out of Paris. And I mean, wherever I went, of course, my companion, apart from meeting people on the way, was uh, your sketchbook. And that's how I accumulated so many sketch, sketches that a number of which are glued into my scrapbook over there, which shows how little I thought any of that was going to be. <laughs> a lot of these sketches are what has made up the really the two exhibitions, apart from you know the pa actual paintings I did in the studio. Did you think that uh, after this sort of uh, glamorous experience in New York and and in Europe and so on, that uh, that you would find? subject matter here and back home? Well, the yes, uh, there's no there's no trouble about subject matter in Newfoundland. There's no, so if you're really interested in art in the, in, uh, it sounds kind of, you know, uh, a little bit uh, <laughs> uh, something here that I don't want it to sound like. Uh, it's, everybody of course loves scenery and I mean it's always beautiful, but you can put up you know, there's sometimes just the way the light falls on some still life on the table, uh, or, and it's the light. I mean, it's, it's really what makes uh, makes it exciting. You know? When did you have your first one-person show? That was in 1982. That was the one Edith Goodrich uh, encouraged my young friend, uh, Joe Carter, to put together. You had to wait quite a long time. In the well, I didn't have to wait because uh, she was waiting. She wanted me to have the first... So uh, three years before that, you see. What was the public reaction like and what were your feelings uh, uh, regarding it? Uh, they were mixed. There was the, the always the fear, of course, is it going to be a flop? And yet people kept saying, even before I got, you know, had the courage to go up it by myself the day it opened to see it first. Uh, I had to have other people telling me it's great, you see, a very exciting. So opening night really was a bit of a feeling of unreality, but on the other hand, a kind of nice reality, if you know what I mean. The reactions were very good, and, and the red stickers were going up all over the place. And uh, it was a very different kind of show, I think, because uh, it wasn't all one thing. Uh, Were they works that you'd done over quite a period uh, of time? Over, over quite a period of time, yes. So going back to these early ones of the things that you may see behind me here, the Chesterfield, the, uh, or behind the Chesterfield, rather, the uh, early paintings that I started at the Breacher Studio. Um, what about your, your most recent show then at the Pollyanna Gallery? What uh, kind of a change, what, how different was that? It wasn't, was it, it wasn't terribly different because uh, they were still sketchbook. Uh, uh, it was interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, there there were some that of the later ones that I was doing in watercolors in Newfoundland, and uh, some that were very slight. Uh, you know, just a bit of pen and ink and a little bit of watercolor that. I hadn't thought of at all as, well, I'd never think in terms of a finished picture, but I didn't even think there was enough there, you know, to put in a frame. But they were uh, the ones that people seemed to like uh, very much, but otherwise it could almost have been the same kind of exhibition. And the only th big difference, which was more by accident than design, was that the earlier one had a lot of animals, so, uh, you know, so I loved uh, painting and drawing rather at the zoos uh, in New York and in Paris, and uh, and cats of course all over the place. Uh, you know, I have a cat in every language and and in every sketchbook. But uh, they went very fast. I don't think one of the uh, these animal drawings was left. But in this one, for some reason, I I didn't. Uh, they didn't get into the show, or I didn't put any in. What about? Uh 
sketching and drawing and painting now. Do you have any plans for uh, uh, any uh, show in the future? Or no, do you I, I don't. Well, you know, galleries keep opening. They keep uh, calling me the Sparrow or Sparrow Gallery. I just uh, hired Emma Butler to be the manager, and uh, Emma was there. And then I thought, well, here we go again. You see, uh, she went to the cupboard and said, oh, I see a lot of these things that I like. And went off with a few things, but then she phoned me later and said she wanted to open in uh, early November, but she said, I'd like a 1985 painting, and I said, well, so would I, but I don't know whether you're going to get one or not. <laughs> so I don't know. I think I'm holding off now because I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to pull it off or not. So. Well, I guess we'll all just have to wait and see. Yeah, I think so. Thanks very much for talking to me today. Thank you.